Well, on Thanksgiving Eve, uh, we had a service here. It's a great time. Many of you are traveling with family, but many came here, and we celebrated Thanksgiving Eve together, and we talked about uh, this topic of being thankful, and we talked specifically about being thankful for what we can't see. There's some things that we can't see with our eyes, but they, they absolutely are worth uh, us being thankful for and worth us giving praise for. And we talked about how God's love is something we can see the results of God's love, but it's hard to see you know, God's love, that, that we have the hope of eternity, we have the good news of Jesus, all these great gifts that God gives uh, that, are, uh, that are things we can't see with our eyes, but that are amazing, and that we should actually pause and say, God, thank you for your good gifts. But the reality is sometimes those things, because we can't see them, we don't really acknowledge them, we go kind of past them, and we don't thank God. So we talked on, on Thanksgiving Eve about just learning to thank God for the things we can't see. Today we're talking about being thankful for the things we can see. And you might think, well, if there's things we can see with our eyes, just in the flow of our normal days, then of course we notice them, of course we're thankful for them, of course we don't pass those things by, but oftentimes we do. Some of the greatest gifts that God gives are right around us, and we just go right past them, and we miss them. And so I want to talk today about what it looks like uh, to grow in thankfulness, what it looks like to be thankful people. And and as I thought about this, I thought of the idea, uh, I was trying to think of a simple thing to remember, because I really believe that thankfulness isn't something that is based on our experiences or what's happening in our life right now. It's a choice we make in our hearts. You can have a person who has a lot of hard things happening, but they find things to be thankful for, you have people with wonderful things going on in their life, and they're never thankful at all. Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, thankfulness is not based on everything going our way. It's based on, on knowing a God who loves us and cares about us. So I was thinking, about how, how do we learn to be thankful? And this is the idea that came to my mind. Snap. Just a simple, a simple idea, a way to remember, how do I learn to be thankful? Snap. How many of you can snap your finger? If you can snap your finger, start, start snapping right now, just like this. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of beat poetry. Okay, and a uh, little 60s. You know, yeah, man, baby, that's no. But uh, okay, and some of you can't snap. Uh, that's okay. We have a special group for that at Shoreline, and we can get into that and get some support. But uh, the, the idea of something's as easy as a snap, just it's that easy, right? So I want to talk about growing in thankfulness. If we can remember the word snap, we can grow in thankfulness. And so here's, here's why I'm saying that. First of all, uh, thankfulness involves slowing. If you're a note taker, some of you are note takers, you're big on that. You notice in your outline there's a place to write words down that are in yellow out there. Uh, So so slowing. So part of growing in thankfulness is simply this. If you walk through life like this, if you're always just just moving, 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 you're going, you just go right past things, you scoot past things, you hurry past things, you're moving along. And there's something about actually just, (sighs) okay, slow down. This is one of my biggest challenges in life. I think I I miss thankful opportunities because I move so quickly. And just slowing down. And watch your pace. I think when you slow down, then, and that's the S. Say, everybody say, slowing. slowing. Say, slow. slow. Now say it slower. Slow. slow. Right? So just to slow down. Second thing, S, we're going to spell the word snap. S-N-A-P. So next letter is S-N. And that is noticing. To notice. Because you can go really slow and notice nothing. I mean, you just can walk along to this, look at the ground. Very slow and just not, but, but when you slow down and you look around and you notice, you notice people that you've been just zipping right past. You notice flowers that are blossoming. The other day I, I saw this whole bank of trees that were changing colors. And I realized I'd been by that area a bunch of times, but I just, this time I slowed down and I was just like, wow. I said to somebody, that's like, like fall in California. When I lived in Michigan, you had official fall. Here it's just kind of bits, bits of fall around it, but I noticed that's like fall like leaves. So you slow down and then you notice. But there's more. The third thing is that you appreciate, that you learn to appreciate what it is you see, what it is you notice, what it is. I'm thankful for what I see. And here's the reality. You, you, can be, you can be in a relationship with somebody and you can slow down and you can notice them and they can irritate you. <laughs> you know, it's not working. I'm slowing and I'm noticing. No, no, no. It's slow down, notice, and then appreciate. To say, God, I'm thankful for this. This person, this situation, this good gift. Snap. Slow Notice, appreciate. And then the third thing is to proclaim. 
to say something, to say, God, I am thankful for this person, for the situation, for this opportunity, for this material thing you've given. I, God, I'm, I'm truly thankful. Or to look at somebody else and say, I'm thankful for you. Most of people are like, what do you mean? What do I do? So I'm just thankful. We don't, we don't say that enough. We don't tell other people enough. You know, I'm just so thankful. It's a great word. How often do you hear people just kind of stop and just kind of just say, you know what? I got to tell you something. I am just so deeply thankful. It almost sounds kind of foreign, doesn't it? It should be a normal expression because God has been good. Whether we have a lot or a little is not the point. I think in the first three years that Sherry and I were married, we found out when we did our taxes because they kept telling us you know, they, they, that we were living below the poverty line for three years in a row. But I was thankful we had a place to live. My mom's mom had actually bought a little triplex in Pasadena, and she uh, didn't like people much, and so it was empty except for her in the back one and the front two were empty. I said, Grandma, can I live in the front? I'll clean it up and fix it up. Can I live in the front unit? Yes, thankful. And, and so even though we didn't have much, we were very thankful. Being thankful is about a decision to slow down, to notice, to appreciate, and then to proclaim it. I am thankful. Good for you. The first service was slow in that, but I think they were still waking up. Uh, I'm not picking on the first service. I'm just saying. You're much smarter than they are. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm kidding. Of course I'm joking. First time visitors like to see, does that all that? Yes, I do. When I get away from my notes, I get sassy. So, but just say, I am thankful. And to mean it. And to say to God, God, I'm thankful for all you do and for all you give. Slow, notice, appreciate. And then proclaim it. Say something. So I want to think together. What I want to do today is just go through an exercise of growing in thankfulness. Of inviting you to kind of travel with me and say, can I make it a lifestyle? To slow down, to notice, to appreciate and then proclaim the words, I am thankful. To say it out loud to God, to others, to ourselves. And so I want to think of different ways, that we, things that can trigger thankfulness, things that we see, things that we experience. As I was thinking about this and thinking about our senses, how God's given us our senses, just the goodness of our senses. That God has given us uh, the, these senses that we have. In, in Proverbs 20, 12, I love this verse. Ears that hear and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. Ears that hear and eyes that see. Some say, well, I can't see as well as I used to. Well, I can't hear like I used to. In our, th in our third service, we'll have a whole group that's hearing impaired, and they'll have sign language. So let's say, eyes that can see, hands that speak to me. But, but God's given these wonderful senses, and these senses help us to appreciate his goodness, sight, and taste, and hearing, and touch, and smell. To say, these, these are good gifts. And, and so as, as I was thinking about this, I thought about, you know, what are, what are those things that, that all of our senses can get involved in? And one of those things is just the delight of food and flavors. That oftentimes, for some, for some people, the time that they stop and give back thanks is oftentimes at a meal. If you're a hobbit, you do that seven times a day. <laughs> uh, if you live like a hobbit, you might do it seven times a day. But mostly it was three times a day, four times. Sometimes, sometimes you do smaller, more smaller meals, whatever your plans. But when you eat and partake, say, God, I thank you for your goodness. Uh, th there's this great verse in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31, that says this. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Whether you eat or drink and all the, you know, some of you that are Bible scholars say, but wait a minute, in the original context, I don't think the Apostle Paul is talking about a burrito at this point. I think he's talking about a theological challenge that was going on in the church of Corinth, and he was, and I acknowledge that, but I think also in this passage, there's this general truth that God says to us, whatever you do, whether you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you do, do it for God's glory. And so, so I, I have this popcorn over here because I think popcorn is one of those foods that gets all of our senses involved. The other day I was popping some popcorn and the sound, you know, the sound of popcorn, there's this, that, nothing else like it. This is the popcorn popping sound. That's what, do any of you remember Jiffy Pop when you were a kid where you would shake it over the stove and then half of it would be burned? Remember that? Um, but uh, the other day I was making popcorn not in the microwave, and some of you don't even know this is allowed. I made it on the stove. Um, some of you have never heard of such a thing. It's, but popcorn comes off the tree in a bag, and you put it in a microwave. Well, I actually put a little oil in a pan, put it in the pan, and I was shaking it. Shake, shake, shake. shake. And, and, and it had a glass top to the, to the pot, so I could see the popcorn popping. All my senses got involved. My sight, my smell. 
And then when I touch, think about popcorn, particularly like movie popcorn like this. When you have movie popcorn, for the next week, you know you had movie popcorn because your hands are still somewhat oily. And under your nails, you see there's like this little orange. Anyways, that's not the point. But the point is that all your senses get involved. So here's what I want to do. I want to think about this gift of thankfulness for the food that we get to have. So I'm going to show you some pictures of food. This is going to be participation, okay? You don't just get to be passive today. You're going to engage. So when you see the food up on the screen, I want you to respond like you would if it was in front of you and it's a food you enjoy. If you don't like it, don't give a yuck, okay? Just if, a, if you have a positive response, you can do a little bit of what about Bob? Remember the, cop, the corner of the cob scene about, anyway, mm-mm, mm-mm, you know. Remember, remember my line, Faye, is this corn hand shucked? I love that line. Uh, but anyways, um, what about Bob? You go watch it. So I want you, I'll give you some, now, how would you, for some of you, this, this might stir your soul and move within you. Okay. Just, uh, just feels good, doesn't it? Okay, good. How about, now, how about this? Get ready, get ready. How about this? How about this one? Oh, we got it. Can I get a witness? Glory. I, I, some, some people are seeing Jesus. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a double double. Settle down. Um, the thing about, about In N Out Burger, talk about getting your senses involved. If you, you, when you drive through In N Out Burger, if you've ever done such a thing, and most of you I'm sure haven't, but if you drive through In N Out Burger and they ask you the question at the window, are you going to eat this in your car, right? Are you eating this in your car? And I've heard of people do that. I've, of course, never driven and eaten a, a, a hamburger. But if you were to do such a thing, for the next week or so, if somebody gets into your car, they say to you, oh, did you go to In N Out Burger? <laughs> and there doesn't even have to have wrappers around the car. It, you, you just have this residue of In N Out smell for about a week or so. It's a beautiful thing. But, uh, but anyways, so how, how, how would you respond to having this in front of you? There you go. I got a buddy of mine who uh, he's a pastor in Michigan. He eats two things. He'll eat other things if he has to, but if it's his choice, he eats two things. Cheeseburgers, which he, and he said, I, and he, I've been out with him many times. He'll say, okay, I want just the bun, the burger, and cheese. Nothing else. Well, do you want like many, nothing else. Do you want lettuce? Nothing. Onions? Nothing. That's how he, or he has cheese pizza. And he's relatively healthy. He's in his 50s. And so there you go. It's one way to live your life. Uh, so how about a little, little comfort food? How, what's this do for you here? Maybe like that stuffed potatoes. That's nice. Okay. That was a, that was a little pathetic. Uh, my pastor said I was pathetic. Not personally to me, but, but okay. Good. There's good healthy stuff. So wait, wait, let's, let's try this again. Let's try this again. Okay, I'm going to put this up here. And let's all, here we're going we're all going to, here we go. Mmm. Oh, yeah, see, you won't do it, will you? Okay. But there's good, healthy stuff. When, when years ago, when, when Sherry and I uh, would go out to eat, she had certain foods she liked. Now, her favorite thing in the world is sushi. She get that that gets her mmm going there. She loves that. And then one of, our, one of our tech guys who found all these pictures for me, he came up with that one. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> I think tech guys, Pac-Man, Waka Waka Waka. I'm not exactly sure, but there you go. I thought I'd keep that in there. And then for me. If you want to take me to a special place, I mean, you want to, I, mean, I, mean, I don't mean like to a restaurant. I mean, if you want to take me emotionally, psychologically, you know, I won't say spiritually, but if you want to take me in every other way to a special place, it's something like this. It's uh, carnitas, it's al pastor with cilantro and onions, a little bit of a little fresh salsa and a little bit of lime. And it's just, when I say my arms, um, the, the hair stands up in my arms when I <laughs> talk like that. So anyways, the, the point is this. The point is this. God is good. And he's given us taste buds and, and beautiful foods to enjoy. And we should say, God, thank you. And say to others, I'm so thankful for these good gifts. And, and so here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you 20 seconds. And I want you to, I'm going to do it. Pastor Steve, a couple weeks ago, he, Pastor Steve from New Zealand, he'll say, hey, tap, the, tap someone next to you and tell them something. So I'm going to say, tap someone next to you and tell them if you could pick any food you could eat. It would just be like, oh, mm, 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 for you. What would that food be? 20 seconds. Tap somebody. Tell them what that would be. Go. Five. Four. Three, two, one. All right. God gives, it was funny, just looking at you, some of you were just smiling ear to ear. You got so excited about this. Are you allowed to smile in church when you talk about food? Apparently you can. And so, but, but these are good gifts and we should slow down and notice and appreciate and proclaim our thanks to God for all of his good gifts. Thanksgiving can be like this.
Just say, I, I need to tell myself, you know, Kevin, slow down. Notice, appreciate God's goodness and proclaim it. God, you're good. I'm thankful. Say, I'm so thankful for the good gifts that God gives. There's other gifts that God gives, material things, just all the things of this world. And, and yes, Jesus warns us, don't love stuff. Don't make that the primary focus of your life. But, there, but he also says that every, the Bible also says that every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of heavenly lights. The key is that we don't fall in love with stuff and make it the primary focus of our lives, but that we fall in love with Jesus and thank him for every good gift. The responsibility that we have of handling our material blessings Matthew 6.33 says this, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. well what are all these things? Well, they've been, Jesus has been talking about, you know, don't worry about your clothing, don't worry about your food, don't worry about all the stuff of life because when you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, God says, I'll take care of that. And so what we do is we say, God, I seek you first and I love you first and you're first in my life. And then when God gives you good gifts, you say to God, I am so thankful. thankful. And you say to others, I'm thankful for the good gifts that God has given. And the reality is in a, in a church like Shoreline, Shoreline is such a unique church because we have people in this church from every walk of life. We have people from this church that, that are very wealthy and people that have very modest means. We, we have people at the whole continuum, about any walk of life, you can find people at Shoreline that are connected here. And yet the key is to be thankful for what God has given to us. So some people thank God for their car, and they say, they say, God, thank you for my car. And that's not so much me. I'm saying there's other people at Shoreline. And, was, and, there's, and, and some people say, God, I thank you for my car. I put that up there because that's, that's an Opal Manta. My first car was an Opal Manta. I think I bought it from Allie, right? Yeah, I bought it for 500 bucks from my sister, who's visiting today. For 500 bucks, it was, it was like um, the color, the, the tech, you know, they have different colors like the dealers have for the cars. This, uh, this color I had was, it was called puke green. And um, it was this horrible greenish yellow. It was terrible. But the, I loved the car, and I was thankful for it. And it had this sweet 8-track player. If you're not sure what that is, ask your grandparents. Um, and, and, and the thing about my, the car that I love so much is that most of the time when I turn the key, it would start. And if it wouldn't start, it was a stick shift. So I could get people to push me. Remember, anybody remember popping the clutch and starting your car that way? That's how I'd start my car, maybe about a quarter of the time. And about three-fourths of the time, it would start just when you turn the key. But I was thankful because I'd get in that car and I could drive places. And I had an eight-track player. And, it was, and I got it for 500 bucks. It was a good deal. And when I finally sold it, I sold it for 500 bucks. It was a good deal. But you go, God, thank you. But, but you know, some people are saying, thank you, Lord. And some people are saying, thank you, Lord. But the key is that we say, thank you, Lord, right? And so there's so many good gifts that God gives. Watches. People don't wear watches. Well, you know what's funny? People weren't, were wearing watches. Stop wearing watches. I'll use my phone. And now people are wearing watches for decoration now. But, you know, different little things. Instruments. How many of you have an instrument? Grand piano, baby grand piano, harmonica, mouth harp, whatever. You know, what, different. You know, say, God, thank you for the music, for the gifts you give to us. Uh, furnishings. You, how often do you think, I thank you for my furnishings? Well, I don't have much. I don't have what I, I like, but I'm thankful for what I have. Thankful for where I live at Shoreline? Say, Lord, thank you for where I live at Shoreline. Thank you for where I live. We have people in our church that live the whole spectrum. We have people in our church. Somebody was telling me recently, I'm so thankful for my trailer. I live in a community where I can stay for, I think it's four days or five days before then they, I have to move. Then I just roll my home somewhere else and I park it there and that's where I live for a while. And we have people showing that's their that live, in, that live in this community, that go to this church, that love Jesus. Lord, thank you for my home. Lord, thank you for my home. Because it's not about what I have. Ultimately, it's about who I have and who has me and that I'm willing to you know, slow down and notice this is a good gift and appreciate it in my heart and proclaim I am thankful. I am. And it may, things don't always go my way, but I can always be thankful. One of the things I, I'm thankful for, one of the material things I'm thankful for, are my books. I have a library. It, my library is my most valuable possession I have. You say, well, what about your house? Well, my library is my, my most, most valuable thing I own by myself. My house I own with the bank. And every month they have a conversation about me about giving them money and stuff. So it's not the same as my books I actually own outright. But I'm thankful. I say, God, thank you. I love the feel of a good book. I love the smell of a good book. I love reading a good book. I'm thankful. 
You know, you pack up and you go somewhere and you say, look, I'm thankful for my stuff. Isn't that a great shot there? Uh, I'm thankful for my stuff. You know, I'm thankful. Do you notice? How about weird little things? Are there, certain, are there things you're thankful for that most people aren't, but you are? Here, here's one for me. And I want to ask, how many of you would know what I'm talking about here? How many of you know the thankfulness of a really good pitching wedge and, and, and hitting a nice shot with a pitch? Anybody? Raise your hand. Can I get a witness? If you know what I'm talking about, okay? And so this is one of my pitching wedges, my favorite pitching wedge, a 60-degree wedge. And I'm thankful for this. I'm not in love with it. I mean, I care about it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not in love with it. But, but you know, I, I, I swing, is that what you said? Uh, it's just too beautiful. It's going to cause you to, to... There you go. Boom. And so, so, but there's, there's something about a great shot. I remember one time I'm out golfing, and I third hole or so, and I have a ball just off the green. It's kind of sitting up nice. And I go, oh, I'm just going to do a little flop shot to the flag. And I walk over to my bag, and my pitching wedge is missing. A couple groans, a couple gasps. Those are your real golfers right there. You're, you're going, well, there's a bunch of other clubs in your bag. Can't you use one of those? No, I need this one right now. But are you thankful? I'm thankful. That's a... I'm thankful for, for this golf club. Some of you are thankful for knitting needles. I don't understand that. That's your thing, though. You enjoy your knitting needles. Some of you are thankful for your pottery wheel. That's great. That's your thing. But we each have just kind of weird little things that we enjoy, that, we, that we matter to us. We say, God, thank you. Do you thank God for the little stuff, the stuff that maybe may not be a big deal to someone else, but it matters to you? Are you growing to say, I am thankful? One more thing I was thinking about. I'm thankful for this ring. Now, it's not worth near what the ring that my wife has on the same finger on her hand, uh, but, but so goes life. Um, but, but, the, but this, I've had this, you know, Sherry put this on my hand over 30 years ago. It's the same ring. I lost it one time in a movie theater. I was, I was watching the movie. I just took it off. I was like fiddling with it, as I'm prone to do, and I dropped it. All I heard was this ting, ting, ting. And in the middle of the movie, there's lots of people. I'm like, so I think, I'm not going to go crawling under the seats during the movie when it's dark because I end up in jail or something probably. But, so I just, I stayed where I was and just kept, I was thinking about the movie, uh, thinking about the, the ring. And after the, after the show, I went, I counted down the stairs and went and finally found it on, movie theater floors are not fun places to crawl, by the way. But found, but found it, why? Because this, this little thing matters, why? Because this matters. It's, it's, a, it's a reminder of a covenant, of an agreement, of something that we've said to each other, that we're gonna, the way we're going to live together before God. Do, do you slow down? Do you notice? Do you appreciate the good things God has given you? Because let me tell you, I, I may have never met you before, but I'll tell you something. God has given you a lot of good things. Just stuff. We live in a culture that always seems to want more and more and more. That we forget how blessed we are. How good we have it. I get to travel in other parts of the world. And every time I come back to this part of the world, I'm like, God, we, you have been so good to us. To notice Thank you, God. I am thankful. I hope that God stirs your heart today just to grow in thankfulness. In Revelation 4.11, this wonderful passage about God's glory and creation. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. God has created all things. God has created a beautiful world, a beautiful earth that has uh, just places that are almost indescribable. And you can either go there or you can just do a Google search on pretty places on this planet and it'll blow your mind. The places that there are, the, the oceans, the beauty of God's creation. To say, God, I slow down. I notice. I appreciate the beauty of what you've made. And I want to put words to my praise. I want to celebrate you. you know, from deserts to oceans. And not just the, not just the physical places, but the, what, what is there, the wildlife on this planet is staggering. And some of you have been able to travel different places and see just the beauty of what God has made. If you've ever seen, if you've ever seen bear boxing, it's interesting. Uh, but uh, but just, just the beauty of God's creation. And right here where we live, for many of you, you live in this area. And the Salinas Valley has its own unique beauty as a kind of agricultural center. And the coastal area of Seaside and Marina and Pebble Beach and Pacific Grove and Monterey, all the way down to Big Sur, is just staggering. And you know, we can live here and we can just zip right by it. We just zip right by it. Or we can slow down and look around and notice you know, and appreciate. Say, God, thank you. 
And then we can proclaim, I am thankful. God, I'm thankful for your goodness. We say to other people, I'm so deeply appreciative and thankful for all that God has done and all that God has given. And as I was thinking about this, I thought particularly for some people, uh, there are people who one of the, th- the, the things in creation that mean the most to them is their pet. How many of you have a special place in your heart for a pet of some sort? Well, I'll tell you how special pets can be. I send out about quarterly an email to to our pastors and directors, a lot of our staff, and I ask them for prayer needs. And many of them send prayer needs back. The other day, we sent out a note and asked them for pictures of their pets. Got a lot more pictures of pets than I get prayer needs sometimes. So I'm just telling you, pets are a big deal for some people. We have a support group for that too in the church. And so uh, so I want you to meet some pets of some of uh, of our staff members. So we're going to start with one group. This is Chelsea's puppy. This is Deb Federico's little baby there. This is Jesse's lazy dog. This is Taylor's buddies there. Some people want to call those my grandchildren, but I'm not going to say that. They're, but they're very cute. Uh, this is Kim McDonald's horse. Uh, that's a dog there. This is Rachel's doggy and Nate and Katie Tibbs' son riding. They actually saddle that thing and, and uh, and, Prince, uh, and Kingston rides at him. And this is, uh, I don't know if there's John Houseman's beard, mustache, <laughs> chest hair, or his puppy dog, but that's John Houseman and, and pet. And this is Donna Brown's old pal there. So, so now, what have, what have I missed so far? The kitty, see, the, kitties, the kitty people are like, wait a minute. Okay, you're not being left out. Okay, so this is Carly's cat. This is Tom Green's kitty cat there. These are Maggie's twins there. There you go. And, uh, and then I, we, I, there's more. I, couldn't, I can't show them all to you. There's lots and lots more. But John Ryan, our worship, our worship arts pastor, sent his, and I couldn't tell if it was a cat or dog. You might be able to help me here. This is what he sent. <laughs> That's actually what he sent. And so, uh, okay. And then, uh, and then Tyler Smith, our high school director, sent that. That's his cat. So, uh, so here's what you have. Here's what you have. You have 20 seconds to get your camera if you want to, if you have pictures of your pet. If you want to show your pet to someone, tap someone around you and either tell them a place in creation you love or show them a picture of your pet and tell them how wonderful your pet is. 20 seconds, go. Share with each other. Where would you love to go in creation or your pet? Five seconds, four, three. All right. So put your pictures away. Okay, that's it. And I, I, just a question for you. Just a question for you. How many of you have a pet that has more than one outfit that you put onto it? Raise your hand. We have a support group for that too. Thank you. So we'll, you can talk with us afterwards. And so uh, the, the 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 dogs that are part of our family, my son Josh and. Taylor's dogs, have, they have outfits and stuff. It's wonderful. It's great. Um, and so uh, I want to talk about one of the greatest gifts that God gives. You know, thankful for what I can see. And this is one of the ones that we, we can just walk right past. And that's the gift of people, the people that God's put into our lives. We can get moving so fast. We walk by children. We walk by spouses. We walk by friends. We rush by people that God's put into our lives. And we forget to stop and notice and appreciate and and express, proclaim what they mean to us. I love this passage from Genesis chapter one. Back at the very beginning, we read this. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over the livestock, over all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Every man and woman and child that you meet is someone made and created in the image of God. Not not so much our physical appearance as much as the potential that's in us to create, to love, 
to follow him, to, to become the people God wants us to be. And, and God wants us to understand that when it comes to people, if there's anyone we shouldn't rush by, if there's anything we should be thankful for, it's the people that God has placed in our lives. And as I was thinking about that, I, I thought about Shoreline Church, this group of people that God has gathered together here on this peninsula from different cities, different communities, different backgrounds and walks of life. In our, chart, in our church, we have young people, we have older people, we have a great mix. We have, have people from just about every kind of background or walk of life. We gather together for special moments. We do baptisms in the ocean and here on our campus and just celebrate the power of Jesus in our lives. Uh, we, we, we share community together and learn to love each other and serve each other. Our children's ministry at Shoreline takes over, I think, over 230 to 240 people a month to minister to all the kids that are part of this church on the weekends, at Awana Midweek, and our campus in Pacific Grove. But we love the kids. We pour into, into the lives of families here because every person matters to the heart of God. And not long ago on a Sunday morning, uh, most of us woke up and our power was off. And so people, you know, we gathered here and said, so what are we gonna do? There's no power here, out to where we live in the valley there, out to, through, through Pacific Grove, there's just no power. So Pacific Grove campus here, we said, well, we're going to have church. So what we're going to do. So there's no power. So you know what we did? This, this is here on this campus. We took all these chairs you're sitting in here, not the ones in the balcony, but the ones here, and we took them outside. And then we took some instruments, and we got a little power generator, got it fired up, a couple microphones. And we said, we're going to have church. You all know why? Because church isn't this building. Church is what? People, right? And God loves his church, and we should too. And so this is one of three services, and, and or actually one of four, because we had a service over in Pacific Grove also. And God showed up and did great things as we were together as God's people. I, I hope you're thankful to God for his people, his church, and the blessing it is to be part of the church. I hope you're thankful for your family, the family that you have now, a family of origin. Are, are, do any of you come from a perfect family? I'll tell you the answer. No, none of us do. But family's a gift. I was thinking about this, and I thought about, I thought about these two people. Uh, this is, this is uh, my dad and my mom. And this is when they were celebrating their 50th renewal of vows. As a pastor, I got to do their 50th renewal of vows. My mom's passed away now. My dad's still living. But I think about these people that God put in my life, and I am thankful. I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my children. Thank you that I never had girls, but now I have two girls because two of my boys got married. I'm thankful to God for the people he's put in my life. And if you want to grow in thankfulness, just slow down. Notice. Appreciate. Let your heart be engaged. And then proclaim it. Look at people and say, I'm thankful for you. You mean so much to me. Well, why should I do that? I, I told him that 10 years ago. Well, tell him again. Tell her again. I'm thankful for you. Express those words. And then one more thing to be thankful for. And there's so many others, but one more. Are you thankful for the wonder of who you are, who God has made you to be? Psalm 139, this beautiful psalm says a lot of things worth remembering. Here's one of them. The psalmist prays this prayer to God. God, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. See how intimate that is. God, says, God you made me, you shaped me in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. What's the psalmist talking about? Himself. He says, God, you've made everything, and your works are wonderful. I know that full well. As you walk through your days, as you live your life, do you say, I am thankful for me? Not, not in a silly, juvenile, kind of self-centered way. In a deeply theological way. If you understand the gospel of Jesus, you become thankful for who you are because you understand that the God of heaven gave his only son on the cross for you. That Jesus died on the cross for you to make you whole, to wash your sins away, to give you new life. Jesus rose again in glory for you because you're loved by God and precious to him. And if God would call you that precious and that wonderful, and that valuable. Who are you to disagree with God? God, I thank you for me. I thank you for who you've made me and who you're making me. 
And boy, when you come to know Jesus, God goes through this process of growing and transforming you and making you more of what he wants you to be. And so to understand what it means just to say, God, I am deeply thankful for me in a humble way. How do you walk through your days? Do you just, do you just race through? Or are you thankful for the things you can't see, but for the things you can see? And if you want to grow to be more thankful for the things that you can see, just, just in your mind say, okay, as I go through my days, slow, slow, slow down. Notice the people around you, the beauty of God's creation, the good gifts, the taste of a good meal, the joy that God gives you throughout your day. Notice. And then in your heart, say, God, I'm appreciative. Appreciate it. Just be thankful in the depth of your heart and then proclaim it. Say to somebody, I'm so thankful. Say to God, thank you, God. You're so good. We choose every day to be thankful. And I pray that this isn't just a Thanksgiving time truth. It's an everyday truth. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your love, for your goodness, for the beauty of creation, for the taste of a great meal, for the people you put into our lives. Thank you for who we are and who we're becoming and who we can be through faith in you. Teach us, oh God, to grow in thankfulness because, God, you have been good. Teach us to choose thankfulness over and over and over in the great and glorious times where it's easy to be thankful and in the tough, dark times when it takes all we have to slow down, to notice, to appreciate, and to proclaim it. Teach us how to be thankful. For the glory of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want to thank our folks online and our folks in our video communities, uh, in, in, in our video communities with the military for being with us. Uh, and there's a few things on the screen for you to follow up with. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for this worship experience. We hope that the study of God's word here with Shoreline Church was a blessing to you. I want to encourage you to go deeper into God's word by going to our website and opening up the daily reading. And each day there's a passage. If you click on it on any device, a phone, an iPad, a computer, it'll open up the passage. And if you click on the little speaker in the corner, it'll actually read the passage to you, or it can, you can read it or go to your Bible and read it. But read God's Word each day this week. And next week when you tune in, we'll actually be talking about the topic that you've been reading about all week long. To learn more about Shoreline Church, how to connect, how to get involved, go to our website. You can see the address right there on your screen. But thanks for tuning in. God bless you. Have a great week.